Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anastasia and this is the episode number five of my new series Learn English by Reading Books. Well, I think this is a very effective method uh, when it comes to grammar, when it comes to vocab, when it comes to idiomatic expressions and also when it comes to recall because certain words tend to pop up in a novel frequently and when we consciously pay attention then chances are that it'll get stuck in our mind. Isn't it brilliant? In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Normal People by Sally Rooney, who is an Irish author. And we are going to be going to Ireland. Specifically, we're going to be staying in the county, it's called Sligo. And then at some point, through the novel, we're going to be moving to Dublin. All right, so what makes this novel so special is how incredibly relatable it is. I mean, like, nearly every human being on planet Earth can probably relate to this novel, to the main characters, who are, by the way, Connell and Marianne, to the problems they encounter, to the circumstances they find themselves in, to the overarching theme of social class. So the socioeconomic state has played such a huge role in this novel because this is actually the reason why Marianne and Connell strike up this important first conversation. Because Connell's mom works as a cleaner for Marianne's family. So Marianne's mom is Connell's mom's employer, right? So on page one, she says, come on in, come on in. It's not just come in, but but come on in. So um, get in sight, yeah? Uh, this is very common and I wasn't aware until uh, recently that I kept saying come in but not come on in so if you know like the this subtle difference between come in and come on in please drop me a comment underneath I'd be grateful when Connell rings the bell so again this collocation rings the bell um, it's easier than to sort of operate on a daily basis if we know that we just need to say ring the bell right Loren says to Connell when he comes to pick her up because he's driving and she doesn't and they live like perhaps in a um, yeah in a, in, in a, it, so they live in a different part of the town uh, Marianne is rich and they live in a mansion a big house obviously and they are uh, well you know working a uh, working class family uh, Lorraine is a cleaner and a single mom and they live like in uh, just in in a normal terraced house like uh, you know, ter Victorian terraced house, like one part of it, yeah, and so he comes in and uh, keeps saying, can we go, can we leave, and she's like, I didn't realize we were in a rush, right? First of all, this in a rush is like, it's, uh, it's like a collocation or a phrase, uh, you know, prefabricated phrase for us to pick up and go, and also the agreement between the two verbs. So I didn't realize we were in a rush. She doesn't say, I didn't realize we are in a rush. I didn't realize we were in a rush. You've got your mock results today. So the concept of, uh, of, of a mock exam is like the format of this exam is the same as of the real exam, but obviously the content is going to be modified, right? We've touched upon the overarching theme, I think, which is uh, social class, right? And it's because of uh, the differences in their socioeconomic status that the two of them actually meet up, like, privately under different circumstances, so not um, in school, uh, and strike up a first conversation. And so, um, she asks him, I think, whether or not he uh, he got his French results back, and he says, "I got on a one. I got on a one." When we start learning in English, we are taught that the indefinite article a um, can have a variant on when it's followed by a noun that starts with a vowel, right? And it's exactly the um, case here. I got on a one. Even though a one isn't a proper noun, but the article, um, so the rule that I've mentioned before, definitely applies to this 
uh, case. And then, yeah, so he says, I got an A1. And she says, are you bragging? Um, I'll be completely honest, I didn't know that verb. Bragging, it's like um, showing off, yeah. Uh, in German, it's angeben. So next one is, she exercises an open contempt for people in school. I've got to mention here that she is not uh, popular, she's not liked in school. Uh, she's actually uh, bullied by her classmates. And I think this is like a coping mechanism that she's developed. She's actually quite rude uh, to the staff and also to the classmates. And I think it's probably uh, something she's had to develop in order to defend herself somehow. Right, so an open contempt. Contempt is like a huge dislike. He dreads being left alone with her. This is a complicated construction, isn't it? I mean, he dreads being, being, so I've got with, uh, the present participle and then left the past participle <laughs> of uh, to leave, right? Alone with her. Um, so he's afraid of, you might speculate, other than in school, they don't get to talk to one another, like, ever, by picking up his mom in her house. The likelihood is um, quite high that he might bump into Marianne. And so he dreads this moment, meaning he is afraid of this moment uh, getting real. She says, maybe you should give me grinds, okay? Confession number two. I didn't know what this means. Uh, I, I, I've had to look it up and turns out it's an uh, uh, Irish phrase actually. Give somebody the grinds. It's like uh, in German, Nachhilfe geben or um, right, to sit down with somebody who is knowledgeable about a subject and to uh, sort of to take, a, uh, yeah, to have a lesson, yeah. So to tutor somebody perhaps. His attraction to Miss Neary. Who is attracted to whom? I think it's actually Miss Neary who is attracted to Connell. And I think it's not an easy phrase to get your head around. Um, at least it wasn't for me. But now somehow I think I, um, I've, I've realized, right? So, so Miss Neary is attracted to, like magnetically pulled towards Connell, right? I mean, he is beautiful, he's handsome, he's an athlete, she actually shows affection towards Connell. Uh, everyone thinks that he is attracted to her, right? And um, Marianne actually asks him if he's um, having an affair with Miss Neary. And she says, she's very flirtatious, flirtatious towards you. Uh, she says, flirtatious is the adjective of to flirt with somebody, right? To um, sort of chat someone up. Some people say out of contempt or dislike for Marianne that she's developmentally impaired developmentally impaired by the way the theme of mental health is so important in this book but we'll get to that in, in a minute developmentally impaired so this impaired meaning like um, cognitively uh, unable right um, can't think clearly or fast enough so it's actually something to do with her IQ. Turns out to be the actual opposite because she is like one of the smartest. I think Loren says to Connell that he he's got he's he's got to try to be nicer to Marianne because she's a very sensitive person and a very vulnerable person. Like the same, right? Sensitive, vulnerable, um, easily hurt. When Marianne thinks about her face or and her looks, she says. Uh, or, you know, the narrator says, it's reminiscent of the moon reflected in something wobbly and oblique. To me, interesting is reminiscent of, right, the construction. Uh, so we've got uh, the verb to remind, they are uh, etymologically related, aren't they? And then reminiscent of the moon reflected in something wobbly. <laughs> I like the adjective wobbly. It's like, you know, this uh, pudding, pudding like substance that wobbles wobbly without breaking eye contact with herself so she is regarding herself in the mirror and he says without breaking eye contact with herself so you either make eye, co eye contact with someone or you break eye contact with someone 
so right, the opposite, and also without, again, this preposition, followed by or demands the present participle of the verb that follows it without breaking eye contact with her, herself. She takes her coat off the hook, um, so the hook, right, turns out it's like a uh, something you can you can put your coat on or take your coat off. Um, in my uh, head, uh, I've got an association with essay writing actually, because um, the very first sentence, um, its function is um, to grab the attention of the potential reader, and it's called the hook, right? That now adjusts the collar. Yeah. So the collar, I think, of the uh, school uniform adjusts so that it sits right. A placid smile. This gesture of submission will placate him. Okay, uh, so placid, meaning like peaceful, placate. I didn't know the verb related to placid, placate. Uh, I'll be completely honest, guys. Uh, meaning it would calm him down and it, it refers to her brother who is so jealous of Marianne and her achievements it might actually be him who is developmentally a bit impaired I don't know I'm just speculating just putting it out there but the way he treats Marianne it's not a good relationship it's actually destructive he grabs her by the upper arm and tugs her back from the door I mean somebody is being nearly violent here it's 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 not a tender relationship, is it? Um, he's being quite harsh by grabbing her by her upper arm. Tug uh, is interesting phonologically because we've got the verb to tuck, right? So I can tuck my shirt, uh, like in my jeans, and tug, tug, tug is actually pull, right? She slips out through the patio door, slips, slips out, disappears. Slip. Slip. I think she texts text Connell on my way. Um, right? So, short and simple. On my way. Everyone in the year had to take the last three classes off to go and watch them. So, interesting to me is in the, in the year, so it's the same year. In German it's like Jahrgangsstufe, right? A year. Or like the same class, right? So, year six year seven or year eight they are obviously at the end of um, this high school secondary school so they must be actually in the sixth form I'm not sure what it's called in, our, in Ireland sixth form like year 12 or 13 Connell uh, plays in the school soccer team and there, there, there is a match and everyone has in the year in Connell's year has got to go and watch and obviously to cheer them up. In terms of the focalization, I know I've said I've cut out most of it, but something I've decided to keep. The focalizer. I think we've got two focalizers here, obviously, Marianne and Connell. And I've got a beautiful example um, when Ma Marianne is a, the, the focalizer. In the bus, on the way to the match, she just listened to her headphones. No one spoke to her out the window. So this is what she sees. Black cattle, green meadows, white houses with brown roof tiles. I've touched upon Miss Neary. Um, this was very interesting to me when I went to England. Every female teacher, regardless of their marital status, are referred to as Miss. To Marianne, school is an oppressive environment where people are scrutinized and monitored for misbehavior and that uh, the students have to comply at all times with arbitrary rules. I think obviously her perception has something to do with the way she's treated by her classmates in school, right? The very thought that crosses her mind is, is, is sort of, is it normal, right? I, I, I keep thinking why this book is called Normal People, right? It's like, uh, I've got to question the notion of what is normal, right? Uh, yeah arbitrary like at, at, made at random. Marianne had a row with the history teacher. Yeah, you know by now. I am weird. I love 
encountering phrases with row, round, bow, bow. Yeah, so again, she had a row with the history teacher and no one in the class took her side. A nice, a lovely expression to be on someone's side, right? Or the person is not taking sides. Even her eye movements fell under the jurisdiction of school rules. Marianne snapped back, snapped back meaning, so she started uh, talking back in an aggressive way. I mean, she says to the history teacher, don't delude yourself. By the way, I wasn't aware that delude is also, along with fleeing, is a reflexive verb. What would you say? Don't delude yourself. Um, I've got nothing to learn from you. I mean, that's obviously not polite, is it? It's definitely a disrespectful thing to say to a teacher, but so the way she's become sort of toughened up. Perhaps they don't show their support or um, turn a blind eye to what's happening to her. Connell started coming over to her house more often. Interesting that the verb start demands the present participle of a verb that follows it. Started coming over. And coming over is just like visiting her. Connell said recently that he remembered the incident and that other time he'd felt she was being harsh on Mr. Kerrigan. The famous progressive aspect. Why on earth does he say she was being harsh? She could, I mean, he could have said she was harsh. But he didn't, and I'm still figuring out, I really am, uh, why it's the progressive aspect here and not just present simple or past simple. But I see what you're saying, again, what you're saying in this moment, right, the progressive aspect, see, not physiologically see, but I, I, I get it, I understand your point. Matter of factly, he replied, English never stops to amaze me. You've got matter of fact as a matter of fact, right? Sort of being an objective, being factual and to the point. And then you just attach the Lee suffix and you get matter of factly. <laughs> Brilliant! I love the word formation patterns in English. Effortlessly, right? So you can make an effort. It costs you a lot of energy, time, commitment to get something done. Or it happens effortlessly. Marianne usually felt confined inside one single personality, felt confined, in, in, imprisoned, but like behind this one personality. So you've got confinement. Connell was taciturn, meaning not talkative. After he left, she would feel high, nervous, at once energetic and terribly drained. So it's a paradox because she would feel energetic and drained, meaning he would drain all her energy out of her, right? Drained, like empty, like very tight. School tie loosened. So if something is loose, it's not tight. And it's opposed to the verb to lose, right? Lose, loose, loosen, to make something not be tight, like the school tie. He was examining the spine of the book. I mean, we do have a spine, right? It's like the backbone. Each book also has a spine. That's the spine. Because the girls are being brutal to her in school and say that she uh, never shaves her legs. It says here her legs are shaved meticulously, meaning they are immaculate. They are sort of perfectly shaved. Connell wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. That's the back of his hand. Look at this. It felt greasy. The grease, like this, G, so G-R-E-A-S, is a homophone with the country Greece, isn't it? And then the adjective is greasy. Connell cared what people thought of him. It's actually one of the reasons why their tender and beautiful relationship ends in high school. He would be terribly ashamed of himself if people saw him with Marianne in broad daylight. It's also a, just a prefabricated phrase to grab and go. She's already applied for history and politics in Trinity. They've got to see the exams and then the, the application process has started and she's applied for history and politics in Trinity, the most famous college in Dublin. She's put down law in Galway 
okay so Galway is in Western Ireland and Dublin is in Eastern in Eastern um, a part of the country everyone has to pretend not to notice that their social lives are arranged hierarchically with suit people at the top some jostling at the middle um, so sorry some jostling at mid level others lower down so she's thinking about this social ladder the social class that um, plays such a role in this novel their lateness has not escaped Marianne's notice again a very beautiful construction escape someone's notice she did notice actually that the guys were late uh, for for that event where she was selling uh, raffle tickets um, a, f a fundraiser lively discussion here on the subject of your absence uh, Marianne is texting Connell lively as opposed to lovely lively meaning a heated debate or everyone seems interested but they'll be on their way shortly right I think uh, sometimes it causes a bit of confusion this shortly um, uh, in German I think it's it means in kürzer right like in a, in a short period of time shortly they will be on their way shortly Marianne would have lain on the ground again lie lay lane he was wearing Adidas sneakers, like trainers, at the, that fundraiser event. She ends up crying because um, uh, one lad um, was brutal to her and, and he volunteers and says, I'm driving, I can drop you. Obviously, he is shaking with rage, I think, internally, but he can't show it externally because he can't admit his feelings publicly. That he loves Marianne because it would cause um, much distress for him and annoyance and shame. I'm not used to drinking. Again, I used to. Demands present participle always. He just needs the steering wheel with his hands. Uh, this is really um, interesting. To need K N E A D and need N double E D are homophones on the need need but this means actually like you need the dough right or the play dough and he needs the steering wheel with his hands as she's telling him what what what, what had happened to her there and how she's feeling and this shows of course the the amount of distress he's experiencing even in memory she will find this moment unbearably intense. I think this is like a, an instance of prolepsis. So this moment will help her emotionally, mentally to get through what she's got to get through. You are prying into my life now. It's not your business. Okay, it's the conversation he's having with Loren after he tells her that he asked Rachel to go to the depths and not Marianne and Loren makes a fuss by saying that he's a disgrace and she's ashamed of him. He says to Lorraine, you're getting so intrusive with these questions. And when, Mar uh, when, when Lorraine discovers that Marianne comes over to their house, uh, obviously, um, Marianne says when she leaves the house, sorry to intrude. Right, so the verb is to intrude, the adjective is intrusive, and the noun is intrusion. This is starting to sound very shady not good dodgy shady like suspicious perhaps so we now officially make the move from Sligo to Dublin the Trinity College and he ends up following uh, Marianne's advice and studies English and he discovers that his classmates don't worry about appearing ignorant or conceited ignorant meaning not knowledgeable, conceited, meaning being self-absorbed. Um, and he then finds out that they don't actually do the homework, they don't do the they don't read the assigned texts, right? They they're speculating. Yeah, so Connell finds it extremely hard to fit in in Dublin. Um, it causes him a bit of a headache and 
people mock his accent, right? His Irish accent, like uh, from Sligo. And uh, his thoughts here are people in Dublin often mention the west of Ireland, so the county where Sligo, as if it's a foreign country, but one they consider themselves very knowledgeable about, sort of their field of expertise. So they might, they might never have been to Sligo, but they think they know everything about it. An ancient pair of Adidas trainers, and I, I love the use of the adjective ancient here. Wild, ancient. What's it like living on your own? Living on your own, meaning living alone. I think he asks Loren when he uh, pays her visit while studying in Dublin. He then actually goes every weekend to Sligo to work in a garage uh, to pay his rent, his sharing house, and also to pay the tuition fees uh, to buy food, right? It's heartbreaking and Marianne actually completely lacks insight into his financial problems. At one point they, um, you know, move apart because he literally is out of money, like no money at all and she doesn't get it. Yeah, probably miscommunication also, he could have asked her um, if, he, if he can stay at her place. She would have said yes, obviously. He was excruciatingly lonely. Yeah, loneliness is also very... It's a big topic in the novel. Because obviously she experiences a lot of isolation, alienation, being estranged from everyone, being an outsider in school. And they swap the roles once he goes to Dublin and she sort of can function in this new social world and he can't fit in and so he was excruciatingly lonely again massively painfully yeah. I hope you uh, liked this video and I hope you've been able to learn something from it and let me know what you think about the format of this video because I um, yeah we'll see how it goes anyhow um, I wish you all well Всем пока! Tschüss zusammen, bye guys and I'll see you in my next video.